So the NCAA tournament, BYU plays Duquesne Thursday, 10.40 a.m. Mountain Time on True TV and BYU Radio. From Omaha, Nebraska, the winner will play the winner of Illinois and Moorhead State on Saturday. Let's bring in Greg and let's bring in Mark on Zoom. Uh, our pleasure to welcome back to the Wise Guys, BYU's radio announcers, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, and Mark Duran is tag team partner, a broadcast team that is in their 28th season working together. I got that right, I hope, this time. Is, that, uh, is, is it 28 years for you, Mark? Uh, it's 28. 28. That DJ, is, can we get Greg's mic on? That and is amazing, actually. Getting I'm, ready to call another NCAA tournament. Mark's there on the Zoom. Hey, brother, good evening. Hey, we can't hear you. Hey, we're he- are you muted, Mark? Let's see if we can get our board squared away. Or, or do we need to unmute you here? Okay, try again. Hello, hello. There we go. <laughs> we've got, Greg, we got I yours on. I, I have nothing in my headset. I, I can't hear. Oh. I can see Mark lips. I wasn't you know, muted. Sometimes I should be able to, but at this point, I should broadcast. be able to. Let me make sure <laughs> I, I get. I wasn't muted. Let's make sure I get. Um, <laughs> yeah. We are not going to have you. Uh, there we go. Have muted. Gotcha. You got it? We're yes, good? I can Everyone's hear myself. We have, we have technology. We do have technology here. Guys, it's great to have the two of you on the show. I know you're busy preparing for the big dance on Thursday. Let's start with the question that seemed to be buzzing around the uh, social media world. Did, did the Cougs get snubbed in the seeding of a six seed and heading to Omaha and not anything better heading to Salt Lake? I believe that Sunday play is the key, but Gregory, what do you think? Yeah, it, the, the, the committee this season decided to throw all their four or five pods in, uh, in Friday, Sunday sites or feeding into Friday, Sunday sites in the second weekend. So, um, you know, they have the prerogative of, of kind of putting whoever they want, wherever they want. And it just turned out that the four or fives were going places BYU couldn't go. And so yeah. they had, and, and BYU has been dropped a seed line before due to Sunday play. So this was another one of those situations, but on the flip side, again, you look at it initially and you say, well, they got snubbed and, and they got dropped a seed line, but they're playing a team that looks more like a team a five seed might play. So they didn't get the toughest 11 seed by any stretch, by the metrics at least. Now, I caution that Duquesne is one They're of the hot, hottest teams right? in They're the hot. country, right? They've, they've won eight in a row. They won four games in five days to win the A-10 title. They've won 10 of 11. Yeah. So you, you, there's really two ways to look at this thing. Metrics-wise, say you've got a pretty good draw for an 11. Looks more like a 12, maybe a 13. But you've also got one of the hottest teams in the country right now that feels like can you know do anything. And now they've also got their coach announcing today yeah. he's gonna he's gonna retire as soon as the run is done. So they want to make it as long a run as possible. <laughs> so now they have that to deal with as well. So uh, not a lot of things have broken BYU's way <laughs> in the last couple of days. Uh, but it's all about what's gonna happen on the floor on uh, on Thursday now. Mark, you had there was uh, uh, you had some nice tweets since the uh, the tournament. Mm-hmm. Was laid out. What What are your, some of they're your thoughts good, on that? Dave, they're all good. Yeah, <laughs> Mark, Mark. Some are better. Mark, you know they're that even good. when you're not on the show, I recommend everybody. I tell them, hey, Mark Durant's a good follow. He's funny. He's you know, I tell everybody to follow Mark Durant. So, what do you think of the six seed? Uh, well, it's not six, sexy. It's a six seed, and I <laughs> I don't like it. I I'm not as diplomatic as Greg. I think it was highly disrespectful and almost ridiculous. Uh, to think that they would put all the the, pot, the five seed pods going, I mean, it's so easy to fix. It's just it's just a little bit silly. Now I will agree with Greg. I think they really tried to fix it on the back end, and it's fine, and Omaha's fine. But man, this was a pretty impressive season, and I think BYU deserved the seed that they qualified for, which clearly they did, and to play in Salt Lake City. It's rare that you get that opportunity. They don't have it. With that said, I think they've got a nice situation. Uh, uh, as good as Duquesne is, they, they, that's a good spot for them. And that regional setup is is a nice uh, pathway forward for them. So I think the committee fixed it a little bit on the back end. But listen, I, I thought it was disrespectful. I'll just go out and say it. And uh, with that said, maybe that'll just give a little bit of uh, motivation to these guys. I know... A couple of them might use it as motivation, and so that might help. We'll see. Does there – I don't remember in past years where the NCAA actually releasing, hey, here's the actual seeds, like the, seed the, list. the seeds, the list. Yeah. And BYU comes out and there's 17, which would make them not only a five, but the number one five seed. 
Have they done that in the past? They have. What, yeah, they, 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 they do release the seed list after, but it's not been like the last 10 years. It's been more like the last five or six years, I think they've done it. And so they basically just admitted, yeah, BYU. Yeah, well, they yeah, said, yeah. We, sorry, it was a Friday, Sunday thing, and we had to drop them down. And, you know, they're, 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 their regulations allow for it. You can do that. It's it's by the rules. It's just again, Mark said they had to flex. They didn't have to put every four or five pot on a Friday Sunday, but they chose to do that. Um, and and the irony is they, they they rank ahead of their former West Coast Conference brethren Gonzaga and St. Mary's, right. who both jumped them in the seed right. drop. As it turns out, so and, and even San Diego State jumped them in the seed, drop. and they beat San Diego State head to head. So yeah. well, and, and as you mentioned, it's it's the four or five because they play. Um, so. They would have the option, well, we could move them up a seed line, but they made that impossible right. as well. The only option was to move them down. They were going to be a five or a six, right. according to the committee, and, and that and, was about it. And you both have mentioned, um, hey, we like this first-round matchup with Duquesne. Well, I agree. Really defensive team. They beat VCU 57-51. I did, I did that league for 10 years, yeah. and, and they've not been good in the past. This is kind of the best they've been in a long, long time. The coach hangs his hat on defense. That's an interesting matchup. But then you turn around on Saturday and likely play Illinois, who just wants to get up and down the floor and score 90 points. What a contrasting couple of games for BYU. If they beat this Duquesne team, now they face that. What do you what do you think about the one two of this of this Thursday, Saturday? Well, backing up to Mark's point, first of all, I, I do think that the chip on the shoulder mentality's helped BYU already this year a couple times, and now they can hopefully feed off of that in the NCAA tournament um, with the snub. It's called a snub to a six, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and they've been able to use that in the past. Uh, getting past uh, Duquesne, you know, by the C it, it, Interestingly, if you look, I, I, I did this research last night, a little surprising, over the last decade, the 11's got a winning record over the six. It, that's interesting, isn't it? In yeah. the first round. Um, hey, the last time BYU was in. They were a six and lost to the 11. Yeah. Uh, of course, the previous to that, last time they were a six, they went to the Elite Eight. So right. they got two sides of the coin there. But uh, it they is had interesting. that one guy. Who'd they have? Yeah. yeah. But over the last decade, uh, losing record 17 and 19 against the 11. So the 11s are the popular upset more than the 12-5. Uh, then then uh, the, the 11s done quite well. So you get past Duquesne. Uh, easier said than done. I still think there's a lot of things to worry about with Duquesne. Um, Illinois just won the Big Ten tournament, right? Uh, they have a couple of defensive parts of their profile that remind me a lot of like a like a St. Mary's in terms of now they play a much faster pace than St. Mary's, but defensively they don't get you don't you don't get threes up against them, and you've got to do it if you're BYU with regularity, and that's one of those teams that just kind of takes that part away. So that that's the one thing that looming I don't like necessarily on the surface. The fact that that's been one strength of Illinois is taking away the three, and BYU really needs it. They have had games, Texas comes to mind, where they've just gone to town inside, too, yeah. um, where Texas really did try to take it away and yeah. did so successfully. And BYU had like a 75% day inside the arc and still won. So there's a ways around it. But I just look at that and go, yeah, OK, that, that's looming. But And, and every, every breakdown you see puts Illinois as one of the most efficient offensive teams in the country right now, too. And so BYU's in a, in a group. Uh, Auburn, Illinois... Uh, UConn, BYU, these are four of the top 10 offenses, and they're all in the right. same region. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Yeah. Mark, it seems that this time of year, everything gets physical. And back at the Big 12 tournament, it got physical with UCF. It certainly got physical with Texas Tech. Texas Tech took BYU out of its rhythm, out of its flow, out of its movement away from the ball. And their head coach talked about it at halftime. How'd we get the lead? Well, we, we took away their movement off the ball. Not the guy with the ball. We just bugged everybody else, got him out of rhythm. Then they couldn't hit open shots. You, I wrote an article about it in the Deseret News tonight. That that's the strategy. This time of year, you get physical with BYU. If you beat them physically, you can beat them mentally. How did the Cougars come from that Texas Tech game and kind of reboot to both physical and mental and go on the attack on Thursday? Yeah, even though they didn't play particularly well against Texas Tech and were not physical, that doesn't mean they haven't been physical right. all year long. And they've run through that gauntlet. They they know how to play and what it takes to, you know, battle with those types of teams. And uh, I think they'll be ready to go in that respect. Uh, and, you know, BYU's got some sneaky, mean sons of guns on their team. Uh, Trevin Nell gets in people's faces, and he he's not afraid to mix it up. Uh, Spencer Johnson, obviously a good, good defender. Um, you got Richie Saunders uh, is a night. I think I have dreams about having to have him guard me in a game, and it's not pleasant. <laughs> I mean, he's always in. So they've got guys that really can get after it. Now, 
they've got to kind of set their mind to it. I think if they do that, that they are able to be physical with anybody in the country and they've shown it going on the road. I mean, that Kansas team, say what you want on that road, they were very physical and beat BYU just matched right up with them, but they're going to have to have that mindset. They weren't, they didn't have it against Texas tech. So it's a, you know, that's the last we saw of them. So obviously that's a concern, but I think this team in these big time games will be ready to go and will be physical and BYU is more suited, I think, than ever to be physical. They've got a lot of depth, big, strong guys like Foose and Ali, uh, or, or Ali Khalifa is, is like a house to try and move. And, and some of those guys that I mentioned, Noah Waterman, I think is a terrific defender and will can get physical with you. So Listen, it's it, it 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 was a bad taste after that Texas Tech game, but uh, I don't think that's this team. I think they're more prepared for the types of teams that they'll see at least past the first round, the Illinois and the Iowa States of the world, than they've ever been for this tournament because of what they went through in the Big 12. Greg, you tweeted out today um, a lot about Duquesne. People want to know a little bit about this Duquesne team. Mm-hmm. Um, they haven't allowed a team to score more than 80-plus points in the last 22 games. Yeah. And you, and you tweeted that out today. I went, whoa. And, and BYU is averaging 81.8 right. a game. Um, what, what gives here well, in this game? As someone who's covered that league for a while, uh, this is one of those teams that loves to you know, play the lower score. And mm-hmm. Again, I, I keep thinking about St. Mary's because I've had that in my mind for the last 12 years, those kinds of games. Those are the games that St. Mary's wins, you know, 62-58 and, and 58-53. And, and that's what you're getting with Duquesne a lot. So uh, they're coming off a game where they – if you can shoot under 30%, and win by a couple possessions in a, in a tournament title game like they just did. That's who they – they shot 29% uh, against VCU yesterday and won uh, by, by six. Um, that's who they are. They're, they're, they're going to kind of ugly it up a little bit and, and hope for the best. The, the head of the snake is is, is the two-guard tandem of, of, uh, of, Day, of uh, uh, Day-Day Grant and Jimmy Clark. Mm-hmm. And Day-Day is one of those guys, and BYU's seen enough of them this year, that can go off. He's got a career high of 32 is he and, a Pop Isaacs kind of well, guy? Well, yeah, with Pop Isaacs, Darius Johnson, you know, name your guy this yeah. year. That, yeah, that he's kinda, not the six six long. He's six two yeah. and and more stocky built, and like he'll just come at you. And and he is. Um, what the, the remember uh, Ewing Brandon Ewing from yes. Wyoming? <laughs> he's Brandon Ewing. Yes, and and they've got two of them really. The these two guys account for like forty five percent of their free throws attempts on the season like they come from the guard line they're not they're, they're, these guys are downhill runners getting to the rim they have incredible free throw totals and day day's fourth nationally in free throw percentage he's 94 percent, and so he will attack you and make you pay when he gets fouled and he gets fouled a ton they're a really interesting team a compelling matchup in a lot of ways and kind of confounding because they do it in a way that's not necessarily fitting byu style uh they do it on defense their offensive numbers are not impressive they don't do anything particularly well Offensively, besides get down get to the line, yeah, line. Get to the but, line. But so they're they're mediocre offensively, but really good defensively, and that's how they win these games. They've they've won three games this year, scoring under sixty points. They don't need to, to, yeah. to score. You know, BYU yeah. is one of those teams like they're comfy 75, 80. That's kind of where they need to be. That's their wheelhouse. Can BYU win a lower scoring game if it turns out that way? And you mentioned 57, 51 in that championship game. VCU. I've had a bunch of VCU games in the last ten years. They hang their hat on defense, too. So that game, when I saw they were going to match up those two teams, I went, oh, my goodness, this is going to be the worst, boringest championship game okay. ever. And it, and it would have been that. Mark, Mark question for you for, for BYU. Felt like early in the year to me, it was one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. And, and they still have been solid, but not like they were early in the year. I just felt like they dominated on the offensive glass. This is a Duquesne team. And in that championship game, they had 18 offensive boards. They were plus 10 and offensive rebounding margin. That's how you shoot 29% and still win a basketball game, right? So how does BYU have to respond? What do they need to do to kind of get that mojo back on the offensive glass? Yeah, that was BYU's formula. And a big part of their offense really is we're going to jack up a lot of threes and then we're going to go get them when we miss them. Um, And BYU did a great job early in the season, particularly on that. They haven't done a terrible job in the Big 12, but the fact is that the Big 12's got bigger, better guys, and one of the things you have to worry about is just the, the speed in the Big 12. So you, if you're going all out to get an offensive rebound, you get a little top-heavy towards the baseline, those guys are going to go down, and, and it's going to be a layup drill. So you've got you've got some issues in the Big 12 that you had, didn't have in the preseason or with respect to rebounding, uh, but that's still got to be a big part of what BYU does. So they can uh, maybe shoot around. 
20, 28, 30% from three and still be able to win games because of that. And I think it, it, this game against Duquesne will probably be a little bit more like what we saw in the preseason as far as their ability to, to rebound on the offensive boards. But it, it, it's going to be a challenge. Um, but that's a big part because if you're not getting offensive rebounds, then, uh, you know, you're not – you better shoot well because, you know, that's the formula. And we talk about – these really good defensive teams. I like I like playing against good defensive team. That makes my mouth water a little bit. Greg will have the numbers, but there's been several top, you know, five ten defensive teams that BYU scored the the most or almost the most points against those teams. So I like the fact that that Duquesne's a good defensive team because I think BYU has performed well against really good defensive teams. The the teams that make me worry are the the Illinois that are highly efficient on offense because BYU's at times had a hard time slowing those types of teams down and guys get super hot against BYU. Now BYU can can run with anybody and they, and can and score enough points with anybody, but I'd actually prefer the type of game where it's a defensive team. They're going to beat you on defense cuz BYU's shown that they can really put up points against good defensive teams. Man, that's a great that's a great point, Greg, cuz yeah. I, I think I think a great defensive teams, Houston and Iowa State are, are two of the best in the country. Iowa State, when I watch that team, I just think defense. And BYU played really well against Iowa State. And, and I want to add UCF to the list, too. Right, that's right. Those were two games they won, three games they won, against a team that I mean that, that, that they can really challenge you, too. And they, they really make things, they make it hard around the rim. And, and I thought BYU did well to, to go 3-0 and against UCF. Hope UCF wins a couple games in the NIT, because I think that was a team that mm-hmm. uh, actually was, was – uh, uh, looking good by the end of the season. I thought those, those were good wins. Playing off of Mark's point about offensive rebounding, at least it's in BYU's wheel, wheelhouse that they're still a top 25 defensive rebounding team. Right. So they can hopefully neutralize some of the other teams' offensive efforts uh, that way, no doubt. Greg Rubel, Mark Durant, on with us on The Wise Guys. We're live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and wiseguys.com. Nice to see the live streamers in from yeah. all over the world I love tonight. This, I love this one. They Forrest Gump 12-able. Is that <laughs> right? Forrest Gump 12-able. Says, I've been shopping around all day about good info on BYU and Duquesne. This is the best, bar none. So there you go. We appreciate that. TV time, Thursday, 1040 a.m. That's Mountain Time start on True TV. Radio coverage starts at 930 Mountain Time on BYU Radio with Greg and Mark. Cougars a seven and a half to eight point favorite from what we've seen uh, so far today. Guys, we're going to talk about your tournament histories because the two of you have called a number of NCAA tournament games uh, Mm -hmm. in just a moment. Get your keys to... uh, to uh, to Thursday, but maybe Greg, the question early is how important will pacing be in that game, right from the tip off? Yeah, I, I, if you take a look at you know just just straight up tempo, Duquesne's you know bottom hundred you know yeah. nationally, so they're not, and, and BYU's not like top one hundred, but they're faster. Uh, BYU's a faster paced team. Um, I, I really do think it it come. This is not revelation, but. You know, it feels like these games where BYU, if they struggle early from three, it's going to be a long day. Mm. And and the days where they kind of knock down their first couple or two of their first four, they settle in and, and kind of do what they yeah. want to do. But it's it's they've and I hate I almost hate the cliche because I think they're more than this. But but to live by the three, die by the three thing is kind of a thing with this team. I go back to the magic number, and Mark's probably tired of hearing it by now. But um, you know, they're they haven't won a game under thirty two percent yet this year. Right. You know, 32 is not a huge number. I mean, if you're making 32, 33, you're making one of every three. But that's been good enough for BYU. They're 23 and two when they're when they're 32 percent or better, and they're 0 and eight when they're under that number. It, it, if if they're having a decent day and don't have to be great, not to be lights out, just be good enough. That tends to be enough for this team. And on the days where they aren't, they don't have it. They're not. They're they're probably not going to win. That's kind of how it's been this year for BYU. Mark, what what do you think on that pacing? Well, I mean, it depends on the game. Obviously, if BYU can get a little bit of a lead, it's harder for a team to to, to play with the slow pace. Um, but BYU, like I said, has not really been slowed down in many games. And uh, and, they, and uh, as it's important in every game, but this team has struggled recently in getting off to a fast start. They did it against UCF. They played well at Iowa State, got off to a pretty good start. But uh, when they don't and they're struggling to get back into it, uh, it's more difficult for them. But it, BYU, uh, I think, is difficult to rein in, and uh, that's why they've been successful. I mean, if you're a defensive team 
and you give up and you're not scoring a lot of buckets, that three point is worth even more than three points because it's just harder for that type of team to get back into the game. And the math, the formula just doesn't work for that. So they're going to have to come out if they want to really compete with BYU and try and match them with some of the three pointers and, and play a little bit faster. If, if they're, Theory is we're just going to take the the air out of the basketball against the team, and BYU inevitably will hit two or three in a row, and 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 it's going to speed them up, and it's going to be hard for any team uh, to play that type of basketball against BYU, in my opinion. And Greg, you mentioned that thirty two percent number, um, uh, Duquesne three point percentage defense thirty one point seven. So they're right on that they're right, right on that mark yeah. where it's the either or for BYU. And so that, this will be an interesting challenge. And, and they've they, had good days. They, they they've had those days where they hit 10, 14 threes yeah. as well. Uh, they were a fifty percent three point team in the first half, I think, against VCU and right. earning a nice lead. So um, they can do it too. And I, I just go back to those two guards. They are they are a handful. And and I, I'm having having recent PTSD maybe a mark too about some of these guys BYU see where they get turned <laughs> on and, and it's tough to turn them off. Yeah, and, and, and BYU has been able to survive some seen of those games. Some yeah. amazing performances this year on opposite on the opposite yes, team. Yes, we I mean, have There is like five or six all time. I can't believe he's making these shots. He's going <laughs> nuts type performances this year. Yeah. It's actually been pretty fun to watch if you can get over the the PTSD the, of it. The, yeah. the, this league that they come, this Atlantic Ten, um, is a league that has a lot of good guard, a lot of good guards, really good guard play, but that league doesn't have the bigs. That, that the Big 12 has. And so, you know, B, BYU should have more size and ability to enforce that kind of size. And they've played against physical size. Don't get me wrong, Duquesne's going to be really physical on that guard line and, and they'll play you tough. But they don't just have the sheer size that the Big 12 teams have week after week. And uh, Ali Khalifa should be feeling better yes. after a week off. And Foos, I think, is really looking like Foos now. And that's good. I, 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 I think also something that hasn't really been talked a lot about, but it's just that. B- Big 12 teams got introduced to BYU, and especially the ones that played them twice or three times. They got a real feel for how to play BYU, but it took a while. You could tell the league, it took a while for to figure BYU out, quote-unquote, and even then, BYU still had success. But teams that don't know BYU and haven't played BYU and are coming off a quick turnaround to face BYU, BYU's stuff is a challenge. Yeah. BYU's stuff is hard to guard, and I think a first-time, a one-off, there's a real advantage to BYU there. Big 12 teams were kind of got a rude awakening to how it is to guard BYU, but they settled in a little bit and made some adjustments as the season went along. But for a team that's getting them one time, one time only, I think what BYU runs is just hard to guard. Uh, and if BYU's hitting threes at a regular rate, uh, it's going to be a tough day for Duquesne. So, so you're telling us that tough for Duquesne, but you're also telling us that Illinois, who's got to prepare for a Thursday game as well, and if, if BYU can get by Duquesne and get to Illinois – that, that that's a tough two-day turnaround for Illinois, who really didn't play a team like BYU in the Big Ten this year. Is that what you're saying as well? Well, I, I, I've done less work on Illinois, obviously, than I have on Duquesne. Right. But I, I just, again, I peeked ahead to see what their profiles were looking like. And then when you combine the job they do against the three with how well they run, their, how much they score, and how efficiently they are on offense, I think it's a, that, that's a legitimate three seed. And uh, I've seen a lot of people saying, I like BYU in the Sweet 16. Um, but that, 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 that's as tough a second-round matchup yeah. as you're going to find. And this is a BYU team that, that you know, doesn't have usually sustained success in the NCAA tournament. It's been a while, right? right. Then, so you go back to 20. 11 was the last time they got out of or won a game. I'm not going to count the first four game uh, against Iona because that's not the round of 64 right. yet. So if you if you look at it, BYU's on a four game NCAA tournament losing streak, and they haven't won a round of 64 game in 13 years. So looking ahead to Illinois is like, well, let's just first things first. Hey, we'll beat Duquesne and then, yeah. then talk about it. Let's I, I, talk I, about Khalifa, Mark. If there's pressure on everybody, obviously, and BYU's a team that distributes points. Uh, throughout the seven, eight, nine guys that, that get on the floor. But when, when Khalifa hit those first two threes against UCF, um, they just didn't know what to do. And they had seen him yeah. twice before. But when he came out and missed his first two uh, against Texas Tech, um, and then the Raiders, the Red Raiders were up 9-0 and, 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 and then built on that. So is there more pressure on Khalifa because of what he does and his uniqueness to strike early to let a defense know that they got big problems because now the guys can cut to the basket because the center's got to come out and deal with Khalifa, which opens the door for Foose to come in a little later and, and go down low. But is the is the bullet uh, – is Khalifa the, the target for Duquesne's defense? Well, if Khalifa's hitting shots, I mean, that puts so much stress on a 
on a defense because, uh, like you said, if he's hitting, they, they got to pull that five guy all the way out to the three point line to to contest. And then it's just easy pickings for Ali Khalifa, right? And to to Greg's point about, you know, your teams figuring BYU out a little bit, but it always cracked me up. You know, teams I think came into BYU thinking, Yeah, we got it. We we we're fine. And then back door after back door, it's like a layup drill. And like, no, they weren't they weren't fine. They weren't ready. <laughs> and until you play against him and what he can do. And you have to worry so much about coming over the top of a screen so they don't get a three. And then they've got the back door cut with the best passer in the country. That is a huge, a huge, hugely difficult to stop. Now, if Ali Khalifa is not making a three or if the guys that if they're taking away the back door and the guys are coming off and getting open looks from three and you're not punishing them for what they're doing defensively. Yeah, it's going to be tough for you, and that's how that's what happened with with Texas Tech. BYU did get shots, but did not punish Texas Tech for the way they were playing, and so that that's obviously going to be a long day for you. But man, if Ali Khalifa is hitting and, and guys are hitting threes, they have to fight through that screen, and all of a sudden it's a layup drill with Ali Khalifa backdoor. They've never seen anything like him. There's no way to prepare for him. You have to play against him a couple, three times to figure it out a little bit, but it's going to be a real challenge for any team in the tournament to figure out what he does to you. You know, I, a question for both of you, because we're watching the TV broadcast and, and listening to them. And they're going, wow, you know, Texas Tech's doing such a great job. And we were all sitting there. I want to know if you guys said this on the radio broadcast, and we're going, no, they're not doing a great job. BYU has wide open looks from three, and they just can't make a shot. Sometimes it's not the defense is playing great. Sometimes you're just not making a shot. Did you guys talk about that in that tech game? Well, I'm sure we did because we're very astute. And uh, <laughs> and so if that was, you know, I, I, it, Greg sometimes misses stuff, but I rarely ever do. Hey, Larry. Um, no, we, we talk about that. And you look at some of the games that BYU has shot under 32% or in the 20s. Uh, you, you obviously you have to give credit for Texas Tech uh, and and other teams with how because they're they're good and they they're contesting but I, I think if you ask Mark Pope that, that most of the shots that BYU take is are the shots he wants uh, even in those games and 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 you, some nights you just you're just not shooting the ball well and so that's like the real question mark for BYU fans everywhere is I know this team can can win every game they're in. And I know that they can make a run to the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight or Final Four, whatever. They're good enough to. But have they put together four, five, six games in a row where they have shot 35% plus from three? Um, I don't know that they have. So that's the real question mark is, can they consistently hit the three in this tournament game after game or – or will they have an off night? And then what happens in the off night? Will they be able to find some other way to win? So that's kind of the question for a lot of people. Is It's not that BYU is not awesome and doing great and could win it all. It's just that they've, they've seen during this season where they had an off night for whatever reason and, uh, and lost games. The... Cougars are 15 and 33 in the big dance, 11 and 23 since the NCAA adopted their seeding format in 1979. Mm -hmm. High seed of three in 2011. They had a four and 94, deepest run, the Elite Eight in 1991. How many games do you guys called, Greg, in the big dance? Oh, gosh. I, I, I'll I'm thinking I'll I've go got count. like a list of 12, 13. Well, we started 14. the, I mean, I, I guess our first tournament game together would have been in 2001. Now, Mark played in games, but we can't count those. But together, right. broadcasting 2001 right. against Cincinnati and San Diego. So every game from 2001 on. So what is that around? Let's see. 15? I can tell you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We've called 17 games. So uh, what was the funnest? Uh, you know, beating Gonzaga in Denver uh, to get to the Sweet 16 was uh, that because BYU had that 
it had been forever since they got out of the first weekend, right? Right. So just you know, winning a game was one thing, and then getting winning two was the next hurdle. I think the year before that, they'd they'd beaten Kansas State, or no, they'd beaten Florida, and then lost to Kansas State. And then the mm-hmm. next year, they get the Wofford Gonzaga thing and got to the Sweet Sixteen. That that to me kind of felt like it. Um, it was a Jimmer season, so you're already on mm-hmm. you know such such a high you know you know energy role to begin with and then getting out of the first weekend of the sweet 16 last time you always advanced was that week so i would probably say the uh, the game against the uh, against against the zags now that, that was also right before BYU's about to join the wcc you're thinking well this is a way to introduce yourself <laughs> okay. to yeah, yeah. Hello, that's Gonzaga, why they right? didn't like us right there was from that the whole thing so which, which that, was more fun that the ncaa tournament th- that year in beating gonzaga or the the conference tournament like jimmer had some i, I realized they lost in the finals but you guys called both of those San Diego State regular season games. You called the San Diego State, but how about that New Mexico we game in the 52. semifinals when Jimmer had fifty two? That yeah. had to be a fun one. Yeah, I lost my mind on that one. That was just because he, <laughs> I mean he kept going and he wasn't. And there was, he shot one free throw, I think. Yeah, the yeah. Entire just, night. it was nuts. just the one. And Danny's courtside, Angel's court, and he, you know, and he breaks Danny's record. Uh, it, it was just a remarkable night. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean the whole Jimmer season was just a blast. But Mark, I mean, are, uh, do, you, do you have anything? I mean, again, I'm just thinking top of my mind. But the, the Gonzaga win, I think, feels like the biggest game we've called. Uh, um, ironically, a game Mark wasn't there for was the Iona comeback, which was the first four games. That was when they were down. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They were Where down 25. Mark? Mark had something else going on. I don't know. <laughs> come so, on. Sometimes. Unless the, it was a wedding. Sometimes <laughs> the attorney in him comes out and he has to do some other stuff, I, right? Listen, I don't have the flexibility I have, have now back then. And I was trying to make a name for myself. I'm, I'm not like Blaine who just has to go wherever he wants whenever he wants that job <laughs> i wish mark what uh what what game was your most enjoyable call yeah not to you know reiterate but that because that gonzaga i remember we beat wofford and i'm sitting there watching gonzaga play i think i beat st john's and i thought to myself there is no way we'll beat these guys <laughs> no way i mean who was it sacre and yeah they, they were, were they so were big and i thought we you know it, we didn't have brand i thought we are we are toast, and we just demolished them, and it, and it wasn't even close. And so that was really cool. And then, you know, we had some Florida overtime games, which were really exciting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that win over Gonzaga because I didn't really expect it, and it was so fun to beat those guys. And uh, and yeah, they, and they played great. That was fun. And even though we didn't BYU didn't win the game, just getting to the, the NCAA tournament in 2001 was a big deal because Mark and I broke in together. I, you know, I called most of the one and 25 season and yeah. our next year together was mm-hmm. the nine and 21 Steve Cleveland's first year. Mm-hmm. And now it's the climb back right from the abyss. And so just getting to the tournament in 2001, uh, winning the Mountain West tournament in Vegas, by the way. Right. Was, beating, that, who was, that? was that the Keeney Young team in that group? Who uh, was no, that? It was, uh, it was a McKelly West. Oh, McKelly's team. Trent, Terrell, That's right. Trent, yeah. uh, Whiting Terrell a day. So beating New Mexico in Vegas to win a conference, which they haven't done since, right? Right. right? So to win a conference tournament, clinching your birth to, you know, and that meant and BYU was kind of back. They got themselves back, right? Because they were at the depths and now they got themselves. So even though they didn't play great against Cincinnati and were kind of out of gas and lost the game, just being in San Diego for that NCAA tournament just felt special because it was such a climb to get there. Mark, you played in uh, three tournament, uh, on three tournament teams, 90, 93, and 95. Um, and you've called a whole bunch of games with Greg as an announcer. So uh, does the blood still get going uh, on game day come Thursday for this Duquesne matchup? Uh, Because you you have the comparison of what it was like as a player to take the floor. Well, like my marriage, every year just gets better and better (laughs) for me in basketball. And and I really enjoy not having to play it because that was really hard. And going to practice, I don't know how these guys do it, but uh, I I loved playing in the tournament. That was super cool. And there's nothing like the NCAA tournament. It's so great. It's got such a great feeling, uh, and it, it's the environment, and uh, it, it it's really special to be a part of. And this season has kind of reinvigorated me, uh, going to all these great new uh, venues and great teams and how well BYU's played. So I, I'm more excited this year than I've been in, in a little while just because BYU has put themselves in a nice position. Obviously, anything can happen in any game in the tournament, but to, to be able to go to the tournament with good expectations, uh, with a team that's very good after a really nice year, uh, that, that's what it's all about. That, that's really fun for a player, for a broadcaster, uh, for a fan. 
this is good stuff. Mark Mark was done with Portland. He was done with Moraga. He was done with Stockton. Like he, he was ready for a change of scenery. I was not done with Malibu though. <laughs> oh, no. Dave, Dave and I were done with Stockton. There's as enough well. places to eat in Malibu. To <laughs> where, keep where, it fresh. where was the place I mentioned this before? We stayed someplace. I don't know if you guys stayed at the same hotel. It was hotel. the Santa Clara game. Yeah, we stayed in a hotel. First of all, I had razor wire around it, and then. It was on it was on New Year's Eve New Year's and Year's nothing Eve. was open and we had a knock on the window of a gas station the guy had already closed so he could bring us out some stuff to stick in the microwave that we could eat for dinner on New yeah. Year's Eve. I'm we like, should have been shot that. I night. am so done with the WCC. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, what about you? Uh, this is the Stanley Cup for a hockey fan to to say good morning everybody. Welcome yeah. to the big dance. I, I, I've never lost the thrill of of, get, of of applying for the credentials and showing up on the practice day and seeing all the because you know, all the teams come in on the same day and, and uh, you get your little designated time on the floor and they put your logo up and they announce you and your fans are in the building. Even just the practice day is is a fun vibe day. And then once you get into the madness, it's uh, it's incomparable. There's nothing, you know, football has its bowl season, but it doesn't feel the same way. Um, basketball has a unique rhythm and build. The fact that it's only 68 teams, it's so hard to get into this thing. Is it the elimination factor that it's... If you, if you lose, you're done. It's over. It, it almost feels... But it just... It, it's a lot to get there. Like, yeah. BYU's already accomplished so much putting themselves... Because first year in the Big 12, you know, playing any kind of postseason would have been great. The fact that you're locked like a month and a half ago mm. in the Big 12... You know, it just kept getting better and better. And then you win at Kansas and like, what could even be, and it just kept going. It kept getting, the kept, games kept getting bigger and better. And and so the fact you even just get there is such a victory already. Like it's, it, it's a huge accomplishment. And how long you, I mean, you want to last as long as possible, but it's hard to win games in this thing. And BYU's experienced that. They, they, they brought really good teams there in the past and, and have had quick exits, yeah. uh, you know, and so it's hard, it's hard to advance. So I think the, uh, the, the difficulty of, of it all makes it special. Do you, do you have uh, in your mind a national champ this year? Does the national championship come to the Big 12 this year in your mind? To, I'll ask that to both of you. And to you too, Dave. We'll start We're going to give though. our final fours. But. We're going to give our final fours a little bit later on. But uh, what do we got? We got what, eight what, big 12 teams yeah. in there. So what, what do you think, Mark? Is, is, is there a big 12 team uh, that can win the national championship this year? Yeah, I think uh, – Houston, I was just shocked by what Iowa State did to Houston because I watched the game before that and they played in one of the games and they looked fantastic. And they had such a great year. Uh, and so I, I certainly can see Houston. I hope Iowa State doesn't because I hope BYU beats Iowa State. But they, they have that same type of team. But, uh, you know, seeing teams from all over the country and seeing what – you know, past years and what the Big 12 brings, it's legit. Uh, whatever you want to say about, you know, juicing the me metrics or whatever the, the concern is about the Big 12 this year, uh, their history in the tournament and the, the teams that I saw this year as good as I've ever seen, and it was one team after another. And so for Houston to, to do what they did in the Big 12 in the regular season, uh, they have to be a, a real favorite for this tournament. And uh, and Iowa State could be a sleeper. Uh, obviously, BYU is uh, is my pick, but I just don't. Looking out across the country, I don't see any other big team that would have a better chance than those teams that I just mentioned. Greg, I think uh, I'm going to avoid the East region because uh, I want BYU to go all the way in that region. So uh, a Big Twelve team out of the West, I think Baylor could get. To, mm -hmm. the, to the national championship uh, to get to the final bunch four. of NBA guys in that team and, yeah. and I think not you know, this isn't great in terms of uh, you know going under the radar but uh, Houston uh, I think their defense will stifle some people that just don't know how to react to it and they're mad now yeah the, 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 the thing is they're when they don't make shots they don't look very good yeah. and that's that's what we saw on, on on the weekend we also saw that in Provo when BYU had a legitimate shot yeah. to take it down had a couple shots late to, to tie or take a lead so I think I think Houston and Baylor are two big 12 teams out of the south um, and, and the west that could get there um, I, tough, tough, tough to pick up against Purdue right now I like yeah, Purdue really good in their region I don't know that uh, TCU, uh, nor Kansas, nor Texas has what it takes to get out get, to get out of that uh, bracket. So no. I kind of like Purdue, Houston, and and uh, and Baylor, and then again the East Region. I want to see play out and hope that BYU gets magic. BYU gets magic and starts knocking down threes. And like you said, they're a tough team to prepare for on, on short notice. 
who knows, right? It's the kind of team that could be a it could be a Cinderella team and just go on a string and get and, there. And in how many teams do we see that get a break on the other side of the bracket where a favored seed some has a bad night and now you don't get the team you think you're going to get and right. you get someone different and it helps you go an extra round or two. That's the beauty of the tournament as well is that not not everything is going to go according to plan and sometimes it benefits a team that that you know, it helps them become magical. One thing Cinderella does every year is hit big shots. Yes, they do. And, uh, and that, I, I think that this becomes team a story. is so likable, too. And they play such a fun style. And Ali Khalifa is just such a unique commodity. And if BYU could win a, a game or two and they're shooting the lights out, shooting all these threes, I mean, that could be a big story. And uh, you get a little momentum going and everyone's excited about you. You see it every year in this tournament. BYU could definitely be that team this this year. I know they've got a pretty good seed, so it's not necessarily a Cinderella, but not a lot of people know uh, about BYU and what they can do, and, and they're fun. I mean, this is a fun, exciting style of basketball. So if they could get yeah. hot and win a couple of games, they're going to be a, a huge story. And, and every year a personality emerges that becomes kind of like a little folk hero yeah. of sorts. That's why I hope Ali is feeling good because if he helps get BYU through, through the first weekend, his style of play, his uniqueness, and then you add the fact that he's honoring Ramadan right now and, and fasting and he's another daytime game for Ali. Richie Saunders is, again, with, with the headband and the hair and the way he plays, a guy that can jump off the screen and become somebody people pay attention mm -hmm. to. The look on his face. So there are a couple guys, you know, that, that, that you could gravitate toward if BYU makes a little bit of a run here. And those, those two come to mind, certainly. I'm, I'm so glad you said that. I've had a couple of people reach out to me from back home in New York and go, who is this Ali Khalifa dude? I can't take my eyes off of him. Like, how can a dude like that pass it like that? And yeah. so, so if you look at the top 25 and it's just the turnover ratio today, it's a bunch of guys between 5'10 and 6'4. Yeah. And then it's just one 6'11 guy sitting at number two nationally. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's totally a unicorn. And the way he wears his headband, David, are like, physics don't even allow it. Like, it, it, can't, be, it can't be that high and stay on. <laughs> it just stays on. Craig Cusick's <laughs> going to join us in a few minutes as we uh, wrap up here just a bit with uh, Greg Rubel and, and Mark Durant. We're going to talk about the top five arenas they had to. Uh, enjoyed in the big 12 to call a game top five we like top five lists and hmm. so we're going to knock that one out but before we do that let me ask you this one because this one feels like remember 2010 BYU got back to the to the big dance they got into the second round um and beat, it was a they, precursor they, they beat Florida right yeah two overtimes right yeah. yeah it was yeah. a precursor to 2011 and what they did yeah with everybody coming back next year except for maybe jackson robinson uh and spencer johnson and you add colin chandler and a couple of others could this be a setup for well next year won't be the first year of all this stuff in the big 12 and byu goes back bigger and stronger with colin chandler joining huh? yeah and isaac davis yeah uh, and the fact you know byu and, has and, only two guys who played in a tournament game right now and it was Dawson minutes. baker too let's throw him yeah, in yeah. The it, and, and that's a guy with a career high of 32 33 in a game that's super explosive player so the only experience they've got right now were a, a, a sprinkling of minutes in the ucla game in that weird covid vibe tournament yeah. in 2021 next year they would bring back guys with significant experience in the ncaa tournament and every coach talks about the the desire to get old and so few can do it yet byu already did it and could do it again which is the crazy thing but let's not ignore the fact that mark pope's gonna have to re-recruit his players again which sure, everyone right. has every to do. year so right you might be surprised by somebody you didn't think was gonna go that suddenly goes so i think it's good they've got the guys coming in because you got to be prepared but if this group came back again with Spen despite you know spencer who graduates and jackson if he leaves and again there's still a chance slim although it may be what if jackson decided that well you know what this was a good run and i, I could get better one more year wow what a bonus that would be i don't want to count on that at all but yeah, ne why not, you know, as they say, run it back, as the kids say, uh, next year. And they wouldn't be picked 13th in the Big 12. Uh, we know that uh, next year. And so, you know, with so few teams can do what BYU did this year to be able to do it again, yeah. what a luxury that would be. be special. I, I'm going to ask you a follow-up to that about Jackson because a lot of people have asked about it. So in college basketball, it's a little different than football. He can go participate in NBA camp, uh, you know, camps, pre-draft camps, and all that kind of stuff and get some evaluation and decide if he wants to that he can come back. So, so if he goes and they go, hey, you're really good, but you're probably a late round or a second rounder or a free agent, does he come back? Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what his desire is. Uh, if, if he likes it enough to say, I want another year of this exact same experience, if I want to say, I'll, I'll take a, a gamble and, and, and play at a different pro level and work my way up that way, I hope he's having a good time at BYU. I hope he loves his teammates, and I think he does. And, and I, I mean, again, because everyone's already kind of counting on him leaving, 
what would that mean? He'd, he'd be, you know, showing up on, on preseason, all big 12 lists and things mm-hmm. like that. So um, from a selfish standpoint, oh, if you've got one more, if you can do it, why not do it? You'll never have this experience again that you having. I think college is a special thing. Mark talks about it too, Durant. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a special thing. And, and, and don't, don't be so, you know, don't be in too much of a hurry to cast it aside yeah. and go to the next level. Cause the next level, next level sometimes isn't, isn't all it's cracked. And it's hard be. and it, it's hard to break in no matter you get drafted or not. It's hard to break in. And sometimes we don't realize how special it is until we're done with it. And then we look back and go, Whoa, wish I could do that again. I'd love, yeah. and we, we talk to guys all the time. You talk to Brian Keel and he would say, Hey, NFL was great, but man, my time at BYU, like all of these guys, when they look back, even that have had great success in the NFL and in the NBA, um, cherish that time, and I think we cherish it more when we're gone from it, right? And so, yeah, I'm with you. I, you know, I feel like if he's not a first rounder, he ought to come back. And we're going to talk about uh, Brother Cusick here and see if he can help us figure out how to get some money to these guys so that they can come back, right? <laughs> hey, uh, Mark, the top five arenas to call a game in the Big 12, what do you got for us? Well, Kansas is as far and away the winner. It was a majestic, uh, surreal, Mm. out-of-body experience. It was everything (laughs) I dreamed about and more. And then to win that game was just absolutely remarkable. I love that. Um, Boy, uh, I can tell you my least favorite was Oklahoma. (laughs) I thought it was, it was, uh, I was not impressed and it was, and not a lot of fan support there for that one. I actually let's just kick them out of the league then. Let's just kick them out of the kick league. Kick them out. Kick them out. Them Get the rid SEC. of them next year then. Okay. I, listen, they didn't bring it. We're done. Um, you know, I actually like Oklahoma State's uh, quite a bit. It, it was so unique. They built. It, it, it had great history from uh, I, I don't know. Greg knows 1938 or something. And then they built an, a, a new arena around the existing arena, and it's connected to the football stadium. And you can kind of look at in the football stadium from one section, and then look in, in the basketball arena. So that was that was really cool. I like I like that. I love Baylor's new gym. Maybe that's number three. I, I thought that was nice and a tough place to play. Um, you know, I even liked West Virginia, and that was an old old school building, but it was like this massive so cool. concrete structure it, that just was <laughs> looming in the hills of West Virginia, and it had this spacious. Uh, in- interior that's divide- defied all the laws of engineering. Hey, that was pretty cool. It had the uh, it's got the Jerry West statue. That's I right. saw that back there for yeah, baseball yeah. last week. All right, so who's number yeah. five? Uh, man, did we even go? Did so he, did he miss, did you, you go? Did can, he, you said he, Kansas, he, Oklahoma State, Baylor, West Virginia were your first four. So you didn't go uh, to Hilton. I, like, I guess Texas Tech. Texas I mean, Tech, I like yeah. any. I like any arena where they shoot guns, shoot muskets, <laughs> and uh, and their their whole thing is pointing guns at you. They're all like twenty thousand people. Guns. I up. mean, any 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 school that can still get away with that, I love it. He does. All right, Greg. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, because he didn't end up at Ames this year, he didn't do that game. Oh, Otherwise, that's right. I think, I think Hilton would have made his list. He had some lawyering Although stuff to we, do. That. We did we did a game at Hilton. 12 years ago, I think. And so he remembers what it was like. I'm going to go, obviously, Allen Fieldhouse, number one. Mm-hmm. Um, number two will be Hilton mm-hmm. for me. Uh, number three will be West Virginia, WVU Coliseum. Number four will be Baylor, new building, but they did it right. It's awesome. They're right up on top of you. The TV angles were jacked, but was it yeah, feel t- good? Television platforms yeah, are too high. I don't but know how much they can fix that, but it, it looks weird. It but that's, cool there, it's steep, and that it does portray the steepness yeah. of the building. And then yeah. Texas Tech... Um, is also your yeah, five United but, supermarkets because but, because they they draw really well and that that was a whole like Texas Tech their crowd helped to win that game for 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 the Red Raiders against BYU that day yeah. so I think I, I think for year one those are my top five Kansas five. I, Iowa State West Virginia Baylor Texas Tech so you guys are pretty yeah. close except for Mark didn't go well, to Iowa well, he State had, he had Galar Iba and I would have put Gallagher Iba like sixth right because it, that, that's a historic building and a great venue so let me ask you both this like where does BYU Oklahoma, where, Oklahoma was last where does the Marriott too? Center yeah. fit into this list where does that fit. I mean, it's 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 like Allen Fieldhouse is I think everyone's number one, but there will be a, a few schools competing for number two, and BYU will be one of those schools competing for number two. So BYU two. right yeah. there with Iowa State. I or? think it'd be tough to talk to a visiting team that came in and didn't think that 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 BYU's game night game night experience didn't rival anything else in this league. Yeah, isn't it interesting in football we talk about well you got to go play at Texas and you got to play at Oklahoma that doesn't even make the top six 
in basketball for either of you? Yeah, we, we went to Oklahoma. It wasn't a great environment that night. Not a lot of a crowd. And, and we, BYU didn't play great, but then again, neither did Oklahoma. It was just kind of a blah game. Yeah. We didn't go to Texas this year. Yeah, and right. we won't go to Texas. Um, but the buildings we went to, I mean, I, I, I just loved every one of them in, in their own ways. Again, Oklahoma falls a little bit, but the rest were unbelievable. Well, the high school gyms really set the... Really cleanse you just the you want to go back to the hilltop cleanse in San Francisco in front of eight hundred screaming fans again. And it's it's one thing to have a bigger building, but to fill it with the ten to fifteen to sixteen thousand fans, which we saw night tonight, meant yeah, a lot. It's a big. great basketball yeah, league. Fans it is such care a good about basketball league. They care about their teams. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's finish with a bonus question. And thank you both for spending yes, some time with us. Yes, we appreciate it. Here uh, on the big week, um, best food. Where was the best food in the Big Twelve? <laughs> Don't uh, just say it. Don't just say it Kansas yeah, barbecue. And we're not talking mark. about the best food in an arena. We're talking about the best food in a place. Well, we got recency bias going on. We were just in the home of barbecue this past week for the Big right. Twelve tournament. But I'll be interested to see what Mark has to say because you know, we we eat, but we're not one of those guys that finds like the coolest Get place in foodie. town. No, I mean we like food. We eat a lot, but we don't. Again, we're not. We don't. You know, and I'm, I'm not a guy that's going to go wait an hour and a half in line for like the hot place. Mm -hmm. Right. I just want to eat. And I want to eat stuff that I like. And so I'm not the most uh, um, adventurous diner. I, I like what I like. And Mark knows that. Mark, where do you think we had? Uh, but you good, did like the good... barbecue in KC. Oh, yeah. You can't, I mean, and I had, I mean, just this past week, less than a week ago, I had some brisket poutine that was unbelievable. There you go. Loved it. Mark, it was a meal in of itself. What do you got, Mark? I don't know, man. That. That IHOP after no, Kansas game in Lawrence tastes pretty darn good, man. Let's go. That, that was a victory meal. That was. That was good. We stuff. ended up in a blizzard. So you're saying the food IHOP. is greatly influenced by the performance <laughs> yeah, if, of the team? If the game is great, everything tastes better after oh, a win man. in Allen, right? Okay. IHOP it is. Greg, what's the travel plans? <laughs> uh, Mark will join me on Wednesday. I go out to Omaha tomorrow. Heading out tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. And so I'll be there in time to get to their practices on um uh, Thursday, Wednesday morning. Have either of you heard um, what kind of crowd uh, BYU fans, you know, are they going to make their way to Omaha? What are you hearing? I, I think they'll draw more from there than yeah. they will draw people going to Omaha. They just got finished with Kansas City. Um, you know, Omaha's not the, I mean, Salt Lake would have been obviously great for a lot right, of reasons. Right. But um, yeah, I think they'll do okay. But I think most of what's going to show up for BYU will be fans that are in the vicinity in the Midwest. Well, guys, uh, enjoy your 18th big dance and uh, come home with some dubs. Let's and get some just so you know, right Omaha is known for steaks. So go get you a steak in Omaha while you're there. Okay? You, don't have to, you don't have to convince me to go find a steak. Okay, go get one. <laughs> you know, I'm going to a birthday party now for me. My birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday. None of you. Not one of you got me a present. I You're shoot. the three richest guys I know. <laughs> don't be, hey, hey, don't be surprised when you go to the party that there's stuff there from us. I shot us. you a text. Yeah. I did shoot you a text. Happy birthday. You did. Everybody. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Happy birthday. Guys, thank you so much for your insights and yeah. for the work you do. And best of luck. We'll be listening on Thursday morning at 9.30. Yeah, you hit, hit the air at 9.30? 9.30 pregame, 10.40 tip. Yeah, who's got the pregame? Uh, uh, ben Bagley's got pregame. Ben's going to do pregame. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mark, we'll, we'll see you in a couple days. All right, my brother. Bring your best stuff. Cause, cause I Greg wish I could have been his. there, but my, my arm needed a break from sitting next to Greg for <laughs> the night. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Yeah, Have fun. <laughs> Thanks for being on yeah. with us, you guys. Thank you. Greg yeah. Rubel, Mark Durant, they're off to cover and call BYU's road and trip to the big dance starting Thursday against Duquesne. If they can win that, likely Illinois on Saturday. Maybe Moorhead State will show up and, and shock the Illini. Um, and we shall see. But it, the game start Thursday. Get your brackets filled out and, and all of that stuff. I, I'm glad BYU doesn't have McNeese State. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, think, I think we won in the matchup. Of yeah, in the first round matchup, it was, it was just fine. Mm -hmm. So You're right. You're good with that, Greg? Yeah, no, McNeese is a handful. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, it's, laughs> yeah. We're glad you know, we don't have either, is that all right? That's right. It's, Keith Troyer. Yes, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, our good friends. I so. wish he was still the head coach, but now he's his, his own boss. He's the AD. Yeah, yeah so he's, he's the boss. The boss. So. Right. Thanks, Greg. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, guys.